हेलो स्टूडेंट्स गुड टाइम टू ऑल आई एम चंदन कुमार प्रधान वेलकम टू दिस चैनल चंदन फिजिक्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस बोर आटम मॉडल लेट्स बिगेन वी नो दैट आटम इज द स्मॉलेस्ट पार्टिकल ऑफ मैटर हुई इज पार्टिसिपेट इन ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ केमिकल रिएक्शंस दैट इज द थ्योरी बेस्ट ऑफ ऑन आटम but uh, no one till suggest what be the structure of an atom first of all the scientist j j thomson proposed atomic model according to him in an atom that is a sphere within that of sphere there are positively charged matters whereas uh, negatively charged electrons are embedded but uh, that the theory can't explain the basic properties of atom another scientist rutherford one of the student of jj thomson experimentally try to conclude what exactly be the structure of an atom and he experiment the very famous alpha scattering experiment according to him or we can say from that of experiment he proposed the atomic theory according to him it is named as rutherford atomic model he say that in an atom there are a very teeny portion which is highly massive as well as positive charge and that is called nucleus around that of nucleus electrons are revolve and uh, his theory does not explain the stability of an atom as well as the line structure of atom these two are the drawbacks of rutherford's atomic model then the scientist neil bohr came into picture and proposed a theory as bohr atomic model according to him the postulates are there an atom consists of a central positive core called nucleus which was discovered by rutherford which carry whole of positive charge and nearly whole of the mass of the atom let us see that with the atom in that atom in that central portion which is the core positively charged and whole of the mass and that of atom are concentrated within this that is called nucleus next was to let the electrons revolve around the nucleus in certain fixed or permitted circular orbits of definite radii around that nucleus there are orbits and these orbits are fixed on that orbit the electrons are revolved electrons are revolved on this permitted orbits then what be the nature of these orbits the permitted orbits the permitted orbits in the sense these orbits of definite radii from that of nucleus these are on a particular distance 
then what be the nature of that permitted uh, orbits the permitted orbits are those in which the angular momentum of an electron is integral multiple of s by 2 pi whereas h is called planck's constant what it say this permitted orbits are those orbits in which the angular momentum of an electron is integral multiple of h by 2 pi now if i say uh, let uh, small m be the mass of an electron v be the velocity of electron therefore the angular momentum the angular momentum l is equal to integral multiple of s by 2 pi whereas n stands for principal quantum number principal quantum number that is uh, 1 2 3 like this for orbit number 1 n is equal to 1 for orbit number 2 n is equal to like this therefore angular momentum that is mass linear momentum into radius distance r mvr ns by 2 pi here r that is the radii radius of orbit for n is equal 1 let it will be r 1 n is equal to r 2 like this and this equation is called Bohr's quantization condition this is Bohr's quantization condition Bohr's quantization condition MBR is equal to ns by 2 pi on that equation basis we decide what be that uh, permitted orbits will on that basis we divide we decide what is r1 r2 r3 like this for particular orbits named as uh, n1 n2 n3 and so on next when electrons revolve in such permitted orbits they do not radiate energy such orbits are called non radiating or stationary orbits until unless these electrons are revolved in that uh, permitted orbits and these permitted orbits are quantized according to Bohr, Bohr's quantization condition follow by these permitted orbits till these electrons does not radiate any energy ok and such uh, orbits we called non radiating or stationary orbits next postulate the energy is radiated then question arises these are non radiating or stationary orbit means electrons are revolving on that orbits does not uh, radiate any kind of uh, energy so how these electrons radiate energy then another postulates clarify it the energy is radiated the condition is when an electron jumps from higher to lower energy orbit then energy is radiated energy radiated condition 
when electron jumps from higher to lower energy and energy is absorbed the condition is that when uh, the electrons jumps from lower to higher energy energy radiated condition is that then energy is absorbed this is the condition when electron jumps from higher to lower one means energy radiating when electrons uh, lower to higher it is absorb energy and energy in the form of photons these are the orbits n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 n6 like this let us refer if uh, E I the energy associated with inner orbit inner orbit e f the energy associated with outer orbit therefore since we called the condition e i condition this is the condition e i is greater than e f e i is greater than e f therefore the energy emitted the energy emitted which is given by s nu is equal to e i minus e f the difference in their energies is quantized and this is called bohr's frequency condition this is called bohr's frequency condition by using that uh, equation you can easily calculate what be the frequency of such uh, radiated energy again by using that frequency we can calculate the wavelength of that particular wave which is radiated so here with the help of this video lecture we understand bohr's atomic model postulates of uh, bohr's atomic model first postulate clarify what is nucleus and uh, the property of such nucleus then how electrons are revolving around that of nucleus then uh, the nature of these permitted orbits that expression is called bohr's quantization condition since uh, these uh, orbits I don't radiate energy we call it as non radiating or stationary orbits if uh, they radiate energy how they radiate energy when electron jumps from higher to lower one then energy is radiated the energy is absorbed when electrons uh, jumps from lower to higher one 
so that expression is nothing but the Bohr's frequency condition. So, with this useful and uh, informative notes, let me wind up the session. Thank you.